you a quick run through of our brand new uh, Stagescape M20D. What is it? Well, really, it's a live sound mixing platform for uh, users that really would like to have great sounding live sound results, but not necessarily have the engineering chops to know how to get there. So whether that's a band and you're mixing from the stage or you're a small club owner venue and you can't afford or you, you don't employ a sound engineer and you just want to get great live sound. Let me give you a quick run through of what the product is, how it works. Um, Here's the um, hardware device. We've got our I.O. complement at the back, 12 mic line pre's, four extra mic lines, four aux out, um, analog um, uh, stereo bus out. We've got our own Line 6 uh, protocol here if you're using our speakers for our digital network. SD card, uh, USB port, and a few other bits and bobs. Here's our control surface, which is a, a resistive touch screen. Uh, four control buttons, 12 encoders, master level here. Best thing to do is actually give you some idea of how it works. Um, we've got auto sensing input, so they sense whether it's a line or a mic input. So we'll take a dynamic mic, pop that in one of the inputs, and here in the middle of our stage view you'll see a dynamic microphone icon. And this is a nominal dynamic microphone channel strip that's being set up under the hood. So all I need to do is turn up the level for that microphone here, the little green light flashes. So you've got level, you can see the, the meter bar here. I can turn up my master output here. If I plug any powered speaker into the output here, and all of a sudden I have got a nominal setting for a dynamic microphone going through my mixer. So as opposed to sort of starting with a platform where everything's centered detented or counterclockwise or zeroed out, I know I'm going to get a pretty good result. Now, here's the thing. If somebody says, well, how do I make that sound brighter or clearer, or how do I change the tone on that? Then I can go to this button here called Tweak, and what I'm faced with is very simple plug-in type-esque view with these XY pads and the first one that shows up is tone. Um, this XY pad controls a parametric equalizer under the hood so I, basically I get my talent to talk into the microphone, I move towards the word bright or wherever here and using my ears like every sound engineer does, they actually get it to a point where it sounds good but without having to translate boom or bright or clarity into numeric control on an EQ strip. Uh, we've got punch, or say I want to add reverb. I've got four global effects channels here. All I need to do is dial in the amount of reverb. I don't have to worry about sending, instantiating an effect, what that effect is. Ready to go, I have reverb, or a doubler, or analog delay. I can change those presets very easily, or I can tweak those presets in a simple view here, just move towards space, for example. Um, so essentially, I go back here, and I, let me just build a rudimentary band typical four-piece band here that's going up. So each of these icons now, underneath each of those icons, there's this virtual channel strip that's been set up and it's ready to, for me to plug in uh, where it indicates here, channels two through six. Or I could just plug things in and swap the icons. I can choose things, presets from this little um, uh, gallery of icons here, or I can go down into this uh, deeper folder here with 200 plus presets. What's really cool is new for the show is our 1.2 firmware release. We've got Brad Maddox, who's front of house engineer for Rush. He's developed a rock preset for us. And um, Daniela Giovanni, who's done work for Ray Charles and Lee Retner, um, he's also developed some presets for us as well. So it's really cool that these guys are endorsing the product. So now we've got channel strip set for each of these. Say, so I want to treat the kick drum. Here I now I've got a sub boost, um, sub bass patch here. Then you may be saying, well, that's all very well, but how do I dive a little bit deeper if I really want to get a bit more discreet and tweak it? Well, if I hit the icon and go into tweak, I can go into this deep tweak mode here. Then all the things that you'd be familiar with on any other digital console show up. So here's my input section. I've got polarity invert. I've got my high pass filter here. I've got a feedback suppressor, 12 band one. I've got a gate, dynamic EQ, actually two of those, compressor. I've got a parametric EQ here. You can see, I don't know whether you can catch it on here, but there's an RTA under there. And I can control things numerically here as well. If I really want to discreetly control the center frequency, uh, um, the, uh, the, the, the gain on that, or the center frequency on uh, this guy here, I can do that here numerically. And going into global effects now, I've got a, a return level and a send level. If I go into tweak, something like that, I can set the tail, I can set the free delay. We've got a low pass filter. So that's sort of setting stuff up and showing you it goes pretty deep. It's got everything under the hood, huge amount of DSP per channel. 
Um, Monitoring is pretty straightforward as well. If I just plug, I'm just going to fake this. They say I've got a powered monitor here. Um, I can plug one of those things in, it's sensing as well. It says I've got a monitor on the output, or I could just stick a monitor on the stage here and then plug it in later. Um, but monitor mixing, you know, challenging for somebody who has not experienced it. Monitor mixing, I just go to this monitor button here, I target the monitor that I want to mix to, and I just change the level. Done, I want to mix to this monitor here. Very, very straightforward as far as um, if you weren't familiar with monitor mixing, or actually just wanted to make a monitor mix very quickly. This little button here is either pre or post fader, so you can have pre if you want to get a monitor mix really, really quickly. It will uh, it will be um, post fader, which is the green button there, so um, you'll be able to get that happening pretty quick. Uh, recording. I can record all 18 analog inputs plus the main stereo bus onto an SD card here, 24-bit 48K WAV files, individual WAV files. So I can take that, put it into a door later on, and I can mix my live show, mix my rehearsal. Um, there's also recording here. Um, the, uh, there's quick capture, so there's 20 seconds of um, uh, memory internally, so I could capture the performance, I could loop it, we could get the band, everybody to go out front, we could do a virtual sound check. Uh, very, very convenient. Um, and then I can go into perform mode here, locks everything down on the stage. I can have discrete level control, I can control the outputs on my monitors, I can mute, I can go here and say actually I want to adjust all the pans or I want to trim the inputs. All the input trims, by the way, are all nominally set, but we have an auto trim setting here that I can instantiate this and all the open mics, I can hit these things, I can get the band to play and I'll optimize the input trim settings. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now. Also, the uh, uh, latest release for the show right now is um, uh, 1.2. One of the big things here is that um, we have uh, control here, icon-based for the stage view, but uh, a different way of, a different workflow. You might be more familiar or you might actually like the control or the feel of the faders. One of the really, really cool things about this is that you can sort of mix your monitor mix now on the fader banks. Uh, you can mix your output levels, you can mix the outputs, whether it's monitor output or main output. Um, something that I didn't tell you here is we can go to tweak, we can tweak the main, out, main output bus as well. So we've got high pass parametric limiter on the output bus as well. Um, pretty powerful tool. All the setups can be saved, you can recall them, you can set up, save scenes on different setups that you can control with a foot switch instant, instantly. Um, so for, say, a school performance, or a band rehearsal, then you can just sort of scroll through those different setups. Um, one of the big deals as well is with a Wi-Fi USB hub, then we have an iPad app that replicates exactly what's going on the screen. One of the cool things about that, that if you go into this perform mode here, you can have the stage view on the device, and then you can have the fader view on the iPad, if you like. Um, and then we've got this button on the iPad app, follow stage, so whatever you have set on the stage, then it will follow it on the iPad app as far as the faders. So if you set groups up, set a quick group up here. We've got this group, a drum group here. here. You can put all your drum groups on a different page, and so you can have your groups on your iPad app, you can have your stage view, your monitors, so it gives you a lot, a lot of flexibility as far as workflows. So in a very brief period of time, that's a quick run through, a whirlwind run through of the product. A lot of depth to it, but on the top level, very, very simple to operate, very intuitive. Um, that's Stagescape M20D from Line 6. Thanks very much.